Being an adult can be annoying, but roasting a chicken can be fantastic. And if you learn how to do it properly, being an adult becomes less annoying. Life can be a struggle, but a good meal doesn't have to be. We can make creative, nutritious, and inventive dishes for under $2 a plate. What is this elusive thing that we call adulting? I don't know, but it definitely involves taking care of one's self. That's why it's so important to learn how to roast a chicken, because it is a super cost-effective way to feed yourself or four throughout the week with a protein and a filling meal. This is the most simple roasted chicken. Literally, salt and pepper chicken in the oven. All right, here is how you deal with a chicken. This is what it looks like. And normally I'd let a chicken sit in my fridge overnight so that the skin can dry out. That's super duper important if you want crispy skin. Because if there's water on there, it's not gonna crisp. It's gonna steam. And steam is not crispy. Steam is soggy. If you don't have a day, you can simply just use paper towel. Just get it dry. It's not gonna bite. Okay, so once you get the top dry, you're gonna flip it over. You're an adult, you can do this, okay? You're gonna flip it over, you can get the bottom dry. You're gonna pat it nice and dry. And while you're there, you come in with the salt. Boom, 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 boom. You come in with the pepper. Boom, 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 boom. Into the cavity. Now this isn't gonna cook evenly unless we do some things that will make it cook evenly. This is what separates the children from the adults. Wings underneath so that they don't burn. This is a problem area right here, okay? You're gonna lose moisture. This is very thin, this is gonna overcook by the time this is cooked, so that's why people trust it. We don't have butcher's twine. So what are we gonna do? Check this out. Knife, back leg here. Make a little hole. All right, so that leg goes right through. Boom! That is a wonderful piece of protein that we are gonna be able to consume at a very low price point. And for the whole week, chicken goes into the cast iron, an ideal vessel for cooking in the oven. Now, we're gonna wash our hands. All right, the chicken is going in the oven for about an hour and 10, maybe an hour and 20. Everyone's oven is different. You're just gonna to wanna to take a little knife and put a little cut and make sure those juices run clear. If they don't, put it back in the oven, okay? Vamos! That chicken is cooked. We're gonna let it rest for a little while so that it retains juiciness. If you cut right into it and start cutting it up, all the juices are gonna run out and it's gonna be dry. And dry is bad. So while it's resting, it's time to make some vegetables because I need fiber. Siamo adults, which means that we're adults. And that means that we need vegetables. So let me show you how to mimic a Caesar using the packet drawer. Creamy, delicious, and effective. All right. We are gonna start with three packets of mayonnaise. Uno, due, tre. Un pochino di pepe, un pochino di sale. <laughs> the garlic has gone everywhere. Most of the garlic. It is virtually impossible to not make a mess in the kitchen. So just go with it, homie. Some lemon zest here that I peeled with a potato peeler and I chopped up with my knife. I'm gonna take the limone. I'm gonna cut it in half, and we're gonna put our hands underneath to catch the seeds. I'm gonna put that in there. Oil of olive, very important. I like a three to one ratio, olive oil to lemon. So, that's about one to one, that's two to one, and that is three to one. Fantastic. Whisk it up. It's a little thin. I'm gonna get some cheese in there, that's gonna thicken it up. Here comes the lettuce, which of course comes from the Latin lettuga sativa. So with the fork, I like to just do a single, nice light coating, coming around, coming around. Here's what's gonna happen now. These are panko breadcrumbs. It's a Japanese bread flake. It lasts a very, very long time, and it adds a wonderful textural crunch. Let's put those in. And some Parmesan, as always, from the block. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, get into the comments section. Someone will set you straight. A little finger dance here, okay? Let's carve up that chicken. Hot potato! First thing we're gonna do is take apart the trussed legs. You see how it wants to break away here, the leg? I mean, I can, look, it's, I'm barely using the knife. You see what's going on? And then when you hit a bone, this is a great thing to do. There's the bone, okay. You got a leg with a little bit of thigh on it. Coming along the top here is a breast bone. I like to cut down along it, okay? Just to the side of the center, and you just come straight down until the knife won't go anymore, right? And then you can come in sort of 45 the other way. Boop, there's a breast. It's moist because we trust those legs together and that plumped everything up, sort of creating the illusion of fatter, less fatty meat 
which made it cook better. Now we can come to the wing here. Look, the tip underneath, it's not burnt. This guy literally just fell off. Talk about easy peasy. So you get six pieces, you get some shredded chicken, and you've got uh, the carcass remaining here, which is perfect for making soups that you can eat now or freeze for later. Avanti! All right, we sliced up the breast because presentation matters. Have some salad, okay, very nice. $1.99, crispy chicken breast with a Caesar salad. It's a level one dish, it's easy to do, you should do it. Chicken breast! Mm, 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 mm. You know, the breast is the hardest thing to keep moist, but because we trust those back two legs, it is super duper moist, and I am happy. That is what you get at level one. What happens when you get to level two? Let's find out. All right guys, before we start the next recipe and before we turn the oven on, I wanna make sure you take out the middle and top racks of the oven. Just leave one at the very, very bottom. We need height. Are you ready for level two? Because we're about to make beer can chicken and beer can chicken is tall. Let's make some rub. Sugar, brown variety. Paprika. Got some garlic powder here. Got some onion powder here. Salt, very important. Pepper. Whisk it up, just break up that brown sugar. Listen, the last recipe was level one and this one is level two. It's by no means difficult, but it just requires a little more finesse. You need a can of beer. You're gonna pour half of the can of beer into an iron that is cast. Cheap beer, no IPAs, no stouts. Go for lagers or pilsners, okay? In the pool of fermented wheat water, you will place the can and now we can begin the dry rub. Come in with some dry rub right into the center. Gotta season the inside, very important. And place the chicken upon the can. Yes. I will now take this dry gold right here. Get it all around. Anything that drips will then fall into the fermented wheat water. <laughs> Top three reasons why beer can chicken is awesome. First of all, the chicken is standing upright, so it gets crispy all the way around because it's not sitting in a pan. Number two, you got a killer rub, okay? You got your dried alliums in the form of garlic and onion with the paprika and the salt and the pepper. Third reason why it's awesome, you've got beer in there, okay? I'm not being silly. That stuff's gonna evaporate, it's gonna keep the inside of the chicken super duper moist, and any drippings that fall down will not burn because there is a liquid bath here. Let's get this tall bird into our oven, which is ready to accept a tall bird because we put the rack on the bottom. But first, we're gonna wash the hands. Now we're gonna make some Hasselback potatoes. What are Hasselback potatoes, Frank? They are potatoes with lots of little slits in them so that you get flavor on the inside and even more crispiness due to a maximized surface area. Here's level one Hasselbacking, all right? Level one Hasselbacking looks like this. You got the potato and you're going like this. This is bad. I don't even think this is that good. Level two, something like this, right? Because if you just, uh, uh, uh. Now, if you're not comfortable doing that, you can come in with one of these guys. All right, look, you've created a fulcrum here. So you can get the potato in and you can go, uh, straight through, uh, straight through. And that way you don't cut all the way through, you get the like splayed potato. And that means that you can get salt on the inside and butter on it. Okay, cool, let's do the whole batch. What speed and efficiency. So now make sure you've got all your slits up. We're gonna use butter and we're gonna use salt. The order of the two is very important. If you do the salt first, it's like throwing sand at a wall and expecting it to stick. If you do the butter first, now you've got something for the sand to stick to. The sand, of course, is the salt. Let's make the wall wet, okay? Here we go. Uh, precision, salt. Height is good because you get some even dispersion that way. That wasn't too much of a hassle, was it? How about we let these guys join the chicken in the oven? This bird is uh, extremely well rested, and might I remind you that because we cooked it on top of a beer can, it is crispy all the way around. Okay, so let's cut a piece off, what do you say? How about we take a leg? Beautiful. Let's get these potatoes in here, uno at a time. Gravity is forcing all of this liquid into the corner, which we will take with a spoon. You will notice that there are some black bits in said liquid. The French call them souks, which makes very little sense in English because there's nothing about the flavor of those souks. That souks. This is also liquid gold, okay? I think you should go on top of the potatoes. And that is it! Hasselbacked baby potatoes with a drumstick and a thigh 
under $2. It is delicious. I am going to be well fed and I'm going to be able to convert this into useful energy throughout the day. Let's try a potato first because I've just been jonesing for him, all right? So here is a Hasselback potato. First of all, I mean, it just splayed right open there. Mm. That is a rich sauce. Let's try this chicken. That was really good. It tastes like we cooked with wine and we didn't. Are you ready for level three? Because I am. Here we are, level three of chicken time. We are gonna spatchcock that chicken. That means we are gonna take the backbone out and splay it open. It's gonna cook faster and it's gonna be delicious. How do we start? With the lemon, of course. Let's cut some slices of lemon. Lay these down. Okay. There is nothing tastier than a lemon chicken. This is the truth. And by having lemons on the bottom of the pan here, the chicken is just gonna soak up all of those bright, delicious flavors. It's killer. What would make it even better? Fresh herbs, and they are not as expensive as you think at all. And thyme and rosemary in particular last weeks in the fridge. The other reason to use fresh herbs is because dried ones remind me of a cafeteria. And even though we're at cafeteria prices, I don't want the food to taste like that. This is way better. Boom. Okay, some garlic, number one, number two, number three. All right, let's just get those around. I can even break them up a little bit, why not? The point is to have a base for the spatchcock chicken to soak up, okay? It is time to pull up your pants and get those suspenders on because we are at level three adulting. Are you ready? I am. Here we go. You wanna find the spine. Get your knife just to the side of the spine, okay? Now, we could go one of two directions here. We could leave the spine on one side and fully spatchcock it, or we could remove that spine and deposit it in the bank. We could make a stock from it. That would be good. It's important not only to withdraw, but also to de deposit. You're gonna have to manhandle it. All right. One spine removed. It's important to maintain ownership of this. It is a delicious flavor bomb when simmered in water. Okay, let's flip the bird over. Boom. This is why it's gonna cook evenly because it is flat. But as you can see, it is a little bit high up on the front. We've gotta break the breastbone. And that, you just go like this. You're gonna get a lot of nice crispy skin. So it's time to season this baby up. Start on the inside. Salt, pepper. Put it right on top of our lemons. Inside of the bird is all seasoned up. I got three butters from the package drawer here. One, two, trois. Let's get that butter all the way around, all right? So now we've got wonderful herbaceous and citrusy flavors coming from below, being soaked up by the chicken. And on top, we've added fat, which is going to completely crisp up the skin and seep more flavor into the chicken from the top down. All right, let's get some salt on top here. Boom, 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 boom. Some pepinero. And we have these last two slices of lemon. You're gonna slide it right under there, okay? That is going to keep the breast, which has the least amount of fat, moist throughout the cooking process, which is very important. But we do have uh, some herbs left, so let's put that on top. The situation is that we have flavor on the bottom in the form of lemon and garlic and herbs, and we've got flavor on the top in the form of butter, herbs, and lemon underneath the skin. If this were a battle, the chicken's days would be numbered. It's surrounded from all angles by flavor. It's time to wash the hands. Look at those clean hands. We are gonna use some Brussels sprouts because we're adults. All right, some salt on top of our Brussels. It's a good thing we got some butter on there so that the salt sticks. This is going in the oven for 425 for like 35 or 40 minutes, which is half the time of a regular bird. That's what spatchcocking does. It cuts the cooking time in half. And we all know the time is money. Spatchcock method, baby, level three. If that is not beauteous, I do not know what is. It is ready to be cut into. It cooked in half the time. And we have these gorgeous sprouts of Brussels. Here, here, here. Listen to this. Mm -mm -mm. So sweet. Between the butter and the rendered chicken fat, also known as schmaltz, the flavor that it picked up is delicious. So I'm a thigh man, you know? Nice and easy. Just come right along there. Boom, boom, boom. It basically fell off. I mean, you saw that. Oh, look at those juices, as ridiculous. Taking some lemon. Ooh, we got really soft garlic underneath. Let's get some sprouts, Brussels. All right, guys, check this out. 
That is $2. The chicken has been attacked from all sides with delicious flavors. And the Brussels sprouts are crispy and they've caramelized internally because of they were oven roasted. Yeah. I mean, that's the, and the Brussels sprouts, ma don't. That's good, man. Level three. Let me tell you about the big picture here. Buying a whole bird saves about 30% of the money as if you bought those parts individually. Okay, so that's a no brainer. But how do we deal with a whole bird? Funny you should ask. I gave you three ways from easy, still very easy, to pretty damn easy on how to deal with a whole bird. All three are delicious, and all three are things that adults would do. So go forth and fly with these three delicious recipes.